So it was after my like last tour as Femme, like cause when we did Femme, it was more of a, a live focus. I wasn't DJing. It was more, it's like we had a DJ on stage and we had, uh, I had like two backing vocalists slash dancers, you know, it was really like fun choreographed full live show. Um, but after my last tour doing that, I had like a kind of an uninterrupted stint of time in the studio. Um, uh, here actually just uh, being able to make new music and and I've always through Ultrista and through my work as Femme I've always had one foot in dance music through collaborations and remixes you know I've worked with Forte, we've worked with Christoph, Justin Martin um, and I've kind of always had one foot in that world and one eye on that world just a natural progression really in some ways and I think that's the benefit of always having been an independent artist you know I'm, I've never been tied to a big uh, major label or anything like that so it's always just been I've been able to like develop and morph along the way and also you know as a producer I've just gotten better and better and better over the years as you do you know you keep learning stuff and you know just naturally kind of went this way and then and then as soon as I'm here now say um, creating more like dance focused music it's like I'm having you know more success than I've had probably in my previous incarnations which has been exciting. It is hard and I think you I guess over the years because I haven't really ever say known any different I've learned to just try and give myself some routine and some structure but then also give yourself a break when it's not happening you know I do have days where I come in the studio and I'm like Ugh, I just hate everything and I'll just like <laughs> close the laptop at 3 p.m and I'll be like right that's it, me done for the day I take the dogs for a walk and I come back at another day um I don't try and like so labour over it too much. The best songs I've ever written are, they usually come together very quickly. Not all the time, but usually. It's my experience of making music. Yeah, this is a good question. And I was thinking about it. And like, in terms of just say achievements, I, ironically, probably that Bronson tune coming out um, six weeks ago and having had six million streams, that's like, I'm very proud of that. That was a song that we made remotely. You know, I've never met um, Odessa or Golden Features who make Bronson. So um, it was just made remotely. It was recorded here at my place on my own. Um, the vocal for it, we sent it. You know, this tune came together very quickly and, and so it's, it's had some great success online, which is amazing. But aside from that, I am most proud, generally, of being able to make music professionally. You know, I'm by no means a well-known name or say a household name in, in any scene, but like I've been making music professionally for like eight years. You know, I remember leaving my last like <laughs> minimum wage job as a nanny and uh, I was working in a vintage shop at the time. And I remember signing my first publishing deal and just feeling like, all right, what? Regardless of what happens, I'm never gonna go back to working another job. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this music thing work. Um, and thankfully, I have been able to do that. You know, with just solid determination. Um, so I'm quite proud of myself. I have to keep reminding myself that as like, you know, I'm still, I'm making music full time and I'm able to make a living out of this. And I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. In terms of the pandemic having ignited live streaming and just giving the music industry a kick up the ass to have a look at ways we can monetize those platforms as producers and DJs, you know, whether that be even, you know, production masterclasses and also the DJ live streams and, and get us to really think about how we can reach those global audiences without leaving, you know, make really high content, amazing, co like high quality content without necessarily leaving your studio or house or wherever you are, but being able to reach people like all over the world is, is really exciting. Um, and I hope that there's, I don't know, I'm sure there's people building apps and new platforms out there that are like gonna be really like innovative, I hope. So glad to see that this discussion is 
louder now because for such a long time, you know, I think everybody knows that everybody that makes dance music and that plays dance music knows that the roots of that music are from black culture and there are a lot of record labels and DJs and producers that we all profit off um, the roots of that black culture, yet nobody really acknowledged it um, at all. And say there's a lot more white male DJs than there are, say, even black male DJs, never mind black female DJs. Um, so I think it's got to be, it is absolutely imperative that we keep the conversation going. Um, and also that some of those, say, record labels try and support more talent um, from, say, minority backgrounds. And uh, and it's like, I've always been of the opinion, like a more diverse industry is got to be a healthier industry, you know. I wish I could say I was like, well, I'm, you know, really into my CrossFit and I surf and I, I, I actually don't do any of that. I mainly just make music and that's it. Yeah, so Get Creative uh, came out on Friday and it's a song that I made with an artist called Nova. And Nova and I actually have known each other for a couple of years and we worked on a song called Be Shy, which I released as Femme in 2018. So we have worked together before. And Nova just has this amazing, versatile, like gender defying voice. Like he can sound like uh, say a woman and then he can do this amazing baritone what you know and he has this insane soprano just like just super versatile and amazing sound so it's really easy i find it really easy to make records with nova um he just comes in he does his thing and then i just build the the beat around it and the music and the wobble around it so we made that track we did work quite hard on it because it kind of went through a few different permutations before we arrived at where it's at and this is my second single release with Need One, the label. And so I did a single with them a few in February called Sideways. And that got a lot of play on radio and Six Music and things like that. So I think building off the back of that, we were like, okay, we've got this other tune, Get Creative, it's ready to go, but it's not quite in the same world as Sideways. So I, I revisited it and I kind of pulled it a little bit more in line with that sound. Took a lot of crap out of it, actually. That's what I realised. You know, when you work on something, you're just like, it's not quite right. You just keep adding more stuff. Just add that, add that. And then after I had a bit of clarity after Sideways coming out, I returned to it. I was like, ah, you can just pull a lot of stuff out of it. And it still stood up as a great tune. So that's kind of the process we went through of making it. Nova came in with that amazing couple of verses and was like, I've got this. He had it on a very basic beat, little logic sample. And I was like, okay, well, it's a great hook and it's a great vocal. So I kind of worked on pitching it up and it, and it became like this weird deranged duet with himself almost, you know, a male, it sounds like a male and a female vocal, but it's not, it's all Nova's voice. Um, and so uh, I had a lot of fun making that with him. Mm, really good question. So I grew up on, like my, my grandparents would play me lots of Motown and Soul. So, I've actually, funny enough, made an edit of like a Four Tops tune. There's a Four Tops sample in it. Um, Baby I Need Your Loving. I love that song. Uh, one of my favourite songs ever. And it's just, I find, I mean, I'm a big fan of sad bangers anyway. Like tunes that like, they feel uplifting, but when you listen to the lyrics, they're actually really sad and about heartbreak. Um, so that's one of those songs. And I made this ridiculous edit of it. It'll never get released because it's a Four Tops sample. How the hell are we ever going to clear that? but I play it in my sets all the time and uh, it always goes down a storm. So I think, yeah, my, one of my dream collaborations, if you could go back in time, would be to work with some of those like classic Motown um, artists, you know, Sam and Dave and, and the Four Tops and uh, even, you know, some of the girl groups of the 60s. I just, you know, I love that whole era of um, like uh, soul and pop music.